uh, the best for last, in my opinion. This last one's going to be a discussion of dispersion forces, and they're also called London forces, and it's what occur when the electron clouds of two molecules within close proximity of each other are distorted because of the repulsion between the electrons. The atomic charge distribution is disrupted for a split second, 1 times 10 to the negative 15th seconds. That's how split that is. Um, resulting in a brief dipole moment or induced dipole where one side of the molecule becomes slightly more negative than the other and the other side slightly uh, more uh, uh, relatively positive. This dipole can induce similar dipoles in other nearby molecules. I call this instantaneous dipole induced dipole forces. They're the smallest of the dipoles. They're not permanent, they're temporary. And we've got some pictures here. It says, if we start a simulation with three atoms that are isolated, one, two, three, at the, uh, atom on the as the atom on the right approaches the one in the middle, their charge clouds repel each other and begin to move to the opposite sides of the atom. This then leaves the two nuclei more exposed to each other in a temporary repulsive forces set up. The center atom then gets repelled by the right atom and moves to the left. The charge cloud from the center atom starts to influence the cloud on the left atom. And so we're not at uh, the dispersion force yet. It's just taking a while to get there. There we go, it's starting to move over towards this one. This allows an induced dipole, induced dipole over here. I would call this the instantaneous one. Dipole and this one the induced dipole. And this to me, all that other stuff is nice, but this to me is the dispersion force or a picture of the dispersion force. It's a little different picture, but it's the same idea as the one that I had in the lecture outline. Now, um, they're very temporary, these forces, because they are instantaneous induced dipoles. In the next 10 to the negative 15th seconds, the, two, the atoms are doing something else. However, all atoms have dispersion forces, and as a molecule gets bigger, the dispersion forces get bigger as well because there are more electron clouds to do just this. It says, uh, reading now, dispersion forces occur in all substances. However, they are very weak and therefore are only significant in substances that lack other types of intermolecular forces. You've seen or will see on the homework, uh, you've seen on the homework by now, that we look, call, uh, look for what's called the dominant intermolecular force. The only molecules that have dispersion forces as their dominant intermolecular force are nonpolar molecules because it's their only intermolecular force. If something has dipole, dipole, and dispersion, dipole, dipole is dominant. All right, and uh, the larger the electron cloud, the greater the dispersion force. So argon would have more dispersion forces then neon, then helium. And also, the more spread out or dispersed the atoms in a molecule, the greater the, the London dispersion force. And it's here that I'll say a lot of students like to use LDF for dispersion forces as an abbreviation instead of writing dispersion force. Um, but it stands for London, and that stands for London dispersion force. Okay. So there's two things for London dispersion forces, LDFs. Uh, one of them is the size of the molecule. So increased size of molecule. Equals increased IMF. And because we don't always know the size of the molecule per se, we're going to use molar mass as an indication of size. So argon has a larger molar mass than neon, 
therefore it has larger dispersion forces. And that is the most important trend. Right, this is going to be like ion ion forces. This is most important for determining LDF. Now, let's say, like in these pictures, you have two molecules with the exact same molar mass. You can count them up here. You can count the carbons and the hydrogens, and they, they do. Two molecules with exact same molar mass. Then the more spread out one Then the more spread out molecule has larger LDF, London dispersion forces. So just as it says here, compound B has greater dispersion forces than compound A because it's more spread out. And our picture of this then is that if there's another molecule these two molecules can have their electron clouds interact over more space than this molecule where you can see there's much, because it's sort of spherical, and as the idea goes, uh, or more spherical, then there's less interaction here between the electron clouds and less LDF. Lots of interaction, lots of LDF. Um, the rest of these are going to be putting the trends together, and you can see the relative strengths. So ion-ion is the strongest, then hydrogen bonding, then dipole-dipole and dispersion. So anything has high ion-ion forces, it has the largest IMF. Though within ion-ion, you have to look for uh, product of charges, as we've discussed. And then, if those are the same, then go to um, sizes of ions, but anything with ion-ion is always bigger than anything with hydrogen bonding, which is then bigger than anything with dipole-dipole, which is then bigger than, with, than anything that has only dispersion forces. And that's, you know, not a hundred percent true, but it is for this course. I will allow you to work on the last ones here. Please let me know if you have any questions about these and I'll be happy to answer them.